The question came in regarding how do you know if your ultrasonic transducer is working at the right frequency? Uh, and then two topics come from that. Uh, the first is what is the right frequency? Um, in some applications, you actually control uh, the frequency to only a certain number. Um, for example, in uh, pulse echo distance uh, transdu measurement transducers, you specifically only use a single frequency um, and therefore your transducer will operate there. You know, for example, the airborne transducers using uh, 40 kilohertz uh, as a uh, signal. The other case is where you are actually uh, stimulating the resonance frequency of the device. And now several things will happen if you are correctly um, you know, if your algorithm, your system, your driver has found that resonant frequency and is driving to that frequency. So a couple of things will happen. Uh, you can do a few things which would be invasive in order to determine if you're actually operating correctly. But there are also other things that you uh, can do uh, which are not invasive and don't require a vibrometer to understand if that, uh, you know, if you are operating at resonance. One of the ways you can tell um, invasively, obviously, is you can look for and measure the current and voltage going to your transducer. If the current and voltage are in phase uh, or are close to um, in phase, of not necessarily zero degrees for all transducers, uh, but does provide a power maximum uh, or, you know, relatively in phase, let's say usually um, even transducers which are heavily damped are between uh, negative, you know, 45, you know, degrees uh, between voltage and current. And that's one way. Another way you can know your transducer is operating uh, at least at the right frequency is you use a thermal camera. Now you can actually get cheap thermal cameras which perform very well uh, for your cell phone. Uh, both FLIR and SEEK provide uh, such thermal cameras and I especially use the Seek Pro, which is about $500 for the, either the iPhone or the Android, which provides awesome uh, resolution uh, in order to determine if your transducer is heating up. Therefore, you know what the power is being delivered to the transducer, and therefore you can assume that it's at the resonant frequency. Uh, the other way you can use to measure frequency without directly probing into your circuit uh, is using firstly a current current probe which can be clip on so you don't have to unhook anything uh, you can also find a convenient place to use a voltage probe but if that is still not possible uh, what you can do is use a microphone a, an electric microphone um, and then use that analog output you can find on Amazon or other other places electric microphones which have uh, gain and you know amplifiers to them so then you can directly hook that up to an measure that with an oscilloscope and by putting the microphone closer to your transducer you can easily measure uh, frequencies uh, sub 50 kilohertz like a 40 kilohertz transducer you can definitely pick that uh, signal up using a uh, an inexpensive microphone and that's obviously opposed to using a vibrometer, which is significantly more expensive. Uh, they're much larger and they are also uh, cost prohibitive uh, as well. And sometimes it's actually difficult to get signal uh, from them. So I think I'd recommend using you know, the electrical measurement if you can to understand the voltage and current phase difference. I would recommend using a thermal camera because it's just really easy to see if your transducer is heating up. Um, and I would also encourage the use of a microphone module. Uh, they're very simple. You power them up with five volts. There's a tap for measuring uh, the frequency and you can also uh, perform measurements in that way. And that's also pretty effective. Uh, the other thing I would like to add here is that the frequency which is stimulated on your transducer is always what you put in. Except for a slight amount of nonlinearity, which which does happen, and um, it's not really as significant for the question asked as to what frequency. How do we know your transducer is at the right frequency? Um, you, so if you can somehow output from your driver or your your you know your microcontroller system a um, 
an analog, you know, a, a digital value, a serial output to your computer, uh, which can then display the value which is actually going to your transducer. So that is actually something you are in direct control of what frequency, but now is it the right frequency? Have you locked on accordingly? Um, uh, you can also uh, determine again, like voltage, current, uh, thermal properties, and um, yeah, and then the microphone, is, which is actually uh, really interesting. Uh, thanks for watching this video. This is Hussein Chikani uh, from Ultrasonic Advisors.